So I have a lot of younger listeners who are big fans of Andrew Tate, who really enjoy Andrew Tate. Now, the big news over the course of the last couple of weeks is that Andrew Tate, for those who don't know, Andrew Tate is a, um, he is a online, very online guy who um, was a lightweight kickboxing champion, I believe. And he's become big in the so-called manosphere. He was banned from YouTube, I believe. He was banned from, from Twitter. And he was banned from these things because he was a self-described misogynist, right? Somebody who believes that, that men are superior to women in pretty much every possible way. Well, over the last couple of weeks, he got in a, an online fight with Greta Thunberg in which he was tweeting at her about how he had Bugattis and, and lots of gas guzzlers and he was heating up the climate. And then she tweeted back at him that he had a small d- it, was, it was all very silly. And then one day later, he ended up being arrested by Romanian authorities. And the allegations against Andrew Tate is that he was engaging in sex trafficking. According to the New York Post, police and tactical gear descended on a villa where Andrew Tate and brother Tristan were staying Thursday to detain the British brothers on kidnapping and rape charges, judicial sources told Romanian outlet Libertadia. Video shows the officers with battering rams and guns sweeping through the dark villa before escorting Tate into a car. The brothers in April had allegedly detained two young women, one with American citizenship and one Romanian, inside the villa against their will where they were subjected to physical violence and mental coercion, according to the authorities. Police said that Tate's allegedly formed an organized crime group and sexually exploited women by forcing them to perform pornographic demonstrations for the purpose of producing and disseminating through social media platforms. The brothers had been questioned for five hours by the police back in April, but were released at the time. And then uh, the, they, they are currently still being held in Romania right now. Now, Tate had predicted for a long time this would happen to him. He had predicted that people were going to come after him, that they were going to arrest him. Does that mean that he's not guilty of something? I have no idea. I have no idea whether he's guilty of these crimes. It could be trumped up. It could be the Romanian authorities who are embarrassed by Tate. It could be anything. I don't place a lot of stake in the law-abiding nature of the Romanian authorities. I literally know nothing about how the law... I mean, Andrew Tate literally said he moved to Romania in order to avoid law enforcement. So... I don't know whether that's true or whether that's not. I assume all of that will come out in the wash. The thing I want to focus on is the popularity of Andrew Tate for a moment. And it's fascinating because, again, I have a lot of young listeners who are, who are interested in the stuff that Andrew Tate says. The reason they're interested in the stuff that Andrew Tate says is because he's transgressive. He's transgressive in that he says things that no one else will say. Some of the stuff that he says is, frankly, terrible. And some of the stuff that he says is not terrible. Some of the stuff that he says is actually a version of truth. I mean, when he says that promiscuity is generally a bad thing, he says it only among women. Or he says when, when, when he says promiscuity for women is a bad thing. That used to be a relatively uncontroversial thought, but it's, it's been considered bad to say that now. It's, it's wrong, it's banned. Now, we live in a moment because we are so censorious online and sort of in the, in the political world. We're so censorious. The Overton window has shrunk so much that there are two concepts that have been crimped. One is truth, as in like Pope Benedict XVI truth. Right, things, eternal things of value that you're not supposed to say anymore. A man is not a woman. Men should marry women. They should have kids. Right? These are things that are now considered very controversial in the, in the elite circles of the West. You're not supposed to say any of those things. So truth, like capital T, longstanding truths, these things have been denied. And then there's also been stuff that's been denied that's, that's just kind of garbage, like stuff that's not nasty to say or yucky. And so what's been crimped is courage. Right? People are afraid to say the truth. And they're also afraid to say their opinion because they lack courage, because the social sanctions are so strong. And so because the social sanctions are so strong, and because they go beyond just crimping the truth, they go to crimping pretty much everybody's feeling that they can even say anything, their opinion, jokes. Because of all of that, courage is now held in higher value than truth itself. Being willing to transgress lines is considered a highest value, because in a time where courage is under attack, courage is a very, very high value. Courage is always the first value. I mean, C.S. Lewis says, courage is the first value, Christian. Courage is the first value in order to speak the truth. But courage is instrumental. Courage is useful so that you can speak the truth. What's happened in our society because we have decided to shut down so many modes of speech, because we've decided to ban people from social media and and unperson them and destroy their lives and their livelihoods, because we've done all of that, people who speak loudly are considered the best and the bravest. And it's particularly appealing to young people. And so when you draw a lot of fire the way that Andrew Tate does, a lot of people see that as more courageous than if you say something that is say, a little bit better calibrated and more in consonance with eternal truth, as long, whoever draws most fire, in other words, is the person who's considered the most courageous. And this sort of pithy saying that is mostly true, but kind of not, right? That, that you must be over the target if you're drawing flack. A large percentage of the time, that's true. But sometimes the person who's drawing the most flack is drawing the most flack because what they're saying is actually kind of bad, right? So the, the problem 
for, for Andrew Tate. And the reason why he's become so popular is because he's very transgressive. He, he says the thing that no one else will say. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's really not good. We'll get to more on all of this in just one moment. First, the situation in Ukraine continues to be extremely bad. That war apparently is just going to go on for the foreseeable future. Well, uh, whatever you think politically about the war, there are a lot of people on the ground in Ukraine right now who are suffering. My friends over at the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews have been working in Israel, Ukraine, and the former Soviet Union for more than 30 years. They've never seen hunger and suffering like they are seeing right now. This is why I'm asking for your help. Norman is an 84-year-old Holocaust survivor. He's been blind since birth, and he lives in a Jewish old age home in Odessa, Ukraine. With so much of the infrastructure destroyed over the recent month, including the power grid, Norman has been without heat or clean water for a long time. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews has supplied blankets, food, and other essentials to help Norman survive through the winter. They urgently need your help to continue getting Norman supplies. Please consider donating to the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Just 45 bucks can ensure warmth, food, and clean water to Jewish kids and the elderly in need. Right now, the fellowship has a special matching challenge where your donation will double in impact. Your tax-deductible gift will be multiplied two times to help provide twice the winter necessities and save lives. So head online right now to benforthefellowship.org or text Shapiro to 41444. That's benforthefellowship.org, text Shapiro to 41444. Again, you need to help people who are suffering. One great way to help people who are suffering this brand new year, head on over to benforthefellowship.org or text Shapiro to 41444 and give generously. And so we're going to, look at some of the things Andrew Tate says, because again, he's a very popular figure, particularly with young men. And when people ask me about Tate, one of the things that I've said, I've said this to some teenage boys who are, who are friends of the family. They asked me about him like, I don't know, a week ago. What I said is some of the diagnoses that Andrew Tate has of secular society are correct. His prescriptions are largely incorrect. And the, the things that he puts, he has a rule, a list of rules. And many of the rules that he puts online are actually pretty good. And then the way that he acts, right? His, his version of masculinity, which is have a bunch of kids by a bunch of different women, live in a castle with 30 Bugattis, right? put pictures online in muscle, like this kind of stuff, that's not the traditional mark of masculinity. What Pope Benedict XVI would say, what I would say, what sort of members of the traditional wisdom cadre would say is that the ultimate in manliness is get married, protect your family, provide for your kids and your family, provide a space for them to grow in safety and security, provide them roles and responsibilities. This is the role of a man. This is what a man does. What, what Andrew Tate focuses mainly on is the critique of how society has undermined a lot of this stuff. And then his prescription is, I'm gonna put a picture of myself online with like 30 cars and it makes me look cool, makes me look masculine. Hey, I also like cool cars. Cool cars are amazing. But what, because we have lost eternal truth because we have decided as a society the eternal truth has to go. The backlash is not coming in the form of a restoration of eternal truth. Very often the backlash is coming in the form of punch the people in the face who destroyed the eternal truth. That's the society in which we're living. And, and, and I'm afraid that that could get worse unless what we actually have is a return to some eternal truth. So here's a couple of clips of Andrew Tate and it kind of shows you what I'm talking about, that some of what he's saying is kind of half correct, but he's saying it in, in such a way that is meant to draw fire. So here is Andrew Tate talking about women belonging to men. I don't know, because I think the women belong to the man. I think the woman's yeah, given that's over that's inherently man. where you get called sexist. No, it's not. Well, you can, you can call me sexist if you want, but if you look at marriage, it's the bride's father who gives her away. It's not the groom's father. In is old it? tradition. It, 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 I, the woman is always given over to the man. Read, a, read the Bible, read the Quran, read. You can go to the, the walking down Africa. the aisle. No chance. There's definitely there's like African cultures where they don't do that. I'm sure there are some obscure tribes somewhere. I mean, I can't say I, I'm not a professional. But you, you get it. You seem like you a very gotta, yeah, smart you gotta guy. Understand why you seem like a smart guy. That. You're saying a, a woman is the property of a man if they're dating. I'm not saying they're a property. I'm saying they're given to the man and they belong to the man. It doesn't mean they're a pure property without emotion. Okay, so notice the contrast here. So Portnoy is so afraid of saying that a woman and a man belong together and that a woman, when she gets married, now belongs to the man sexually in the same way that the man ought to belong to the woman sexually. This is literally Genesis 2.24. Right? For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. And Genesis 2.24. So that would be the eternal truth. The, the, that, that is the truth according to every mainstream religion. That would be the thing that, that you would say. And, and the reason for that from an evolutionary biology perspective is because when a woman joins with a man and they create a baby, the woman is sure of her parentage, but the man is not sure of his parentage. And so... We as a society tend to prefer monogamy, right? This is the evolutionary biological reason why humanity embraced monogamy is because it is the best distribution of sexual resources. And it's from an evolutionary biological perspective. It's not a moral perspective. That's just evolutionary biology. Brett Weinstein, Heather Heyer talk about it. Right? All, Heather Hying talk about it. Right? All, all of this 
is, is very well established. When it comes to morality, the morality is that a woman should not be promiscuous and a man should also not be promiscuous. Now, this is the part where Andrew Tate gets the diagnosis right, but he gets the solution wrong. So here is Andrew Tate talking about how women should not be promiscuous. It's bad for them. Well, a woman could say that same thing if she decided. She could say, I can sleep with multiple men, but my men can't sleep with multiple women if she so choose. We're all free individuals, right? Yeah, but you don't. You wouldn't that. agree if a woman said that. I don't think I, I would personally find that revolting, correct? But there are women who find what I say revolting. So you're not telling other people what to think. You're just saying how you think. Yeah, I mean, if I, I think that a, I think if a man is uh, sexual, is not sexually exclusive, it's not the same as if a woman is. Because with a woman, you have the paternity issue. With a man, you don't have a paternity issue. Look, read the Bible. Every single man had multiple wives. Not a single woman had multiple husbands. It's against the will of God. It's disgusting. In the eyes again, of God himself. Okay, so again, historically speaking, what Andrew Tate is saying is not wrong. Morally, the reason why church, where we talked about the capacity for change within eternal rules, moves towards monogamy as opposed to polygyny, right, where a man has multiple wives, the reason for that is because the sophisticated arrangement of one man and one woman is the best arrangement. And so it is not good when a woman is promiscuous. It also happens not to be good when a man is promiscuous. Those may not be equivalent in evolutionary biological terms, that is why eternal morality suggests one man, one woman. So the, the point that I'm making here is that when the moorings of a society come loose, when the society starts to sort of float, when the iceberg is floating, is no longer moored to, the, to, the, to, to anything that keeps it stable. Once that happens, the reactions tend to be extremely chaotic. You get an entire movement on the left that is incredibly destructive, and you get a reactive movement that gets a lot of the diagnosis right, but a lot of the diagnosis wrong, right? It gets a lot of diagnosis right and a lot of prescription wrong. Right. We have many problems in our society. Those problems um, continue into the realm of male and female. It encourages bad behavior by women. But then the answer to that is not bad behavior by men. The answer to that is better behavior by women and better behavior by men. This is so if we're going to have a restoration, we need to have an actual restoration. All right, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it because we will be taking your calls on the very first broadcast day of the brand new year. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.